the week before Shavuos, we're going to speak about the, um, the side of the Degolim. Let's go into the Pasuk and we're going to see how amazing Sefer Bamidbar is starting. Pasuk says, so no, I don't have the first pasuk. So basically, the um, the first thing we do in, in Sefer Bamidbar is we start counting the Bnei Israel. Question is, is there nothing more important in this whole entire Sefer? Since the Torah was not given in order, was not written in the order, you know, chronological order, Okay, so put me an important mitzvah, something who's going to give me a guidance, uh, elevate me about the importance of Sefer Bamidbar. You know, we, by Ikro, we started with the Korbanas. But here, we're starting with counting the Bnei Israel. We counted them in Parshas Kisisa, after the ego. So what's so important about it? Rashi says, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, he took this from the Midrash, that uh, the Midrash says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu had so much love for the Bnei Israel that he wanted to count them over and over. But the Zera says that counting bring death. Oh, in in, Prash in Kisisa, there in Truma, it says to give the so we they were counting only the coins not to touch not the Bnei Israel. But he doesn't say that we uh, they had to give Machatzah Shekel to count them. Even though Rashi, Rashi took the Shita in the Midrash that it says he counted them on the Machatzah Shekel. But there's many opinions in the Tanaim that he was not on the Machatzah Shekel. So why would HaKadosh Baruch Hu endanger the Bnei Israel? Just to know the number? What's so important? HaKadosh Baruch Hu needs to count to know. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows at every moment. If someone passes away or, or, or whatever, especially that's between the time of the previous counting till this time, there were no death. No one died. So what do you have? Only a few boys that basically got from 19... And a few months till 20, or they count them and add it to the previous count. But why are we counting all the Bnei's role and making such a tumult? And not only this, and you're going to call the whole Sefer Bamidbar, you're going to call it based on this Sefer Hapekudim, the Sefer of counting. Why? Because we're going to count them now, we're going to count them. In Nasoi, we're going to count them in Parshas Pinchas, you know. So, this is the, the, the book of the counts. So, you can see here, there's something hidden in this. I don't want to put it a mitzvah that Moshe Rabbeinu did, but it is a mitzvah. Kodesh Baruch Hu ordered it, and, and he went to do it. But it, there was obviously no necessity for it. So, why have we done that? The part I'm going to try to go more into is the part of the Degalim. We have, the Midrash says, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, when he came to giving the Torah, he gave the Torah, he came down with 22,000 camps of um, Malachi. The Mizrael, they saw that, they envied it. And they wanted HaKadosh Baruch Hu to place us 
in encampments exactly like the Malachi. Wow. Okay. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu did it. And these are the Degon. We have to understand what is this Indian of the Malachim coming in formation and Bnei Yisrael want to be in the same formation down here? Why? What does he have a formation? Just to copy them? You want to be a copycat? Or is there an other Indian inside there that it's worth copying? It's not just the copy. There is something. There's a chokhmah. There is an effect. And it does them. So, and this is the part I'm going to drill more. So let's go now into the pasuk. We're going to see the language is really not simple. Usually Aaron is involved only in places where there's a avoda required for the coin. But I'm not going to go into it today, in this year. So, but just worth mentioning to pay attention. You know, when a Kodesh Boku usually gives a mitzvah to the Bnei Yisrael, if it's not pertaining to the Kohanim or they don't bring Kedusha or remove Tuma, then Aaron is not involved. Actually, there's a midrash this week. Uh, I forgot it's a, it's a midrash. Tanchuma, I believe. Maybe Tess. Look, uh, Tanchuma, Tess. Um, anyway, here's the pasuk we're going to try to understand. Ish al diglo, a person on top of his flag. Well, usually a person camps under his flag, not on top of his flag. So, what is the lotion of the Pasuk here hinting? The Oisos. Oh, just uh, realizing it's missing two valves here. The Besavoisam. Oh, no valve. In the whole Pasha, everything that has an Oi almost has no valve. There's a message here. Maybe I'm going to have time to touch it. But anyway, the Oisos. It has to be with signs. Ish al diloi, a person on top on his flag, with signs. The base avoisam to the house of his fathers. Yachanu bnei Yisrael. The bnei Yisrael would come. You don't think it would have been much much easier? He says. Yachnu b'nei Yisrael al diglehem on their flags. I don't care what's in the flags. What it means this base avoisam here, the uh, oisos with signs. So if you're talking about the flag itself and you're telling me the the flag had signs, okay, so then le base avoisam means nothing. Here. It's not in its place. If you take talking to me about the place itself, but not the flag where the flag is. Then the oisos, I don't know what it means. They have to come with signs. Which signs? Shabbos is a sign. Tefillin is a sign. Rizmila is a sign. Are you talking about these signs? Or are you talking about the drawings that were on the flag? Okay, Yachno Bene Israel. Now, Mineged across. Saviv around. The Oihel Moed to the Oihel Moed Yachanu. They will camp. But you just said they will camp. We know that we're talking about the encampment here. What are you saying again? We naked across. They were in formation to the four sides of the world. So I don't understand this. We naked Are they making a circle? Are they, what is me neged sabi across around? So I understand they were around the Oihel Meir, but I don't understand what it means, the Lashen here. So the Pasuk obviously, <clears throat> everything here is coming to say totally something else that seems to the eyes, that meets the eyes, that you cannot translate. The, the, 
every basically sentence here has a soid tell us about the Degon. So this is the first puzzle of the Degon. So it's going to give us the tone. And that's why we have to look at this puzzle to start understanding, you know, what's in the Degon, what's the reason for it. I won't go too deep on it because there's no reason to, but it's an Indian where the depth is, basically I can even tell you, it's the connection, the place, the connection of both worlds. There is a place somewhere where the worlds are connected. Like the, we know the Rekia, the, the Rekia Shamayim is, is Maim Tachtenim and Maim Elyonim almost touch. The, the lower waters and the upper waters are almost touch. There is a place in this world. You know, let's try to understand what's going on. The Midrash Tanchuma, in Bamid Barches, says, Akadosh Bochu tells the Bnei Yisrael, actually, I think I wrote the Pasuk, so it's easier to see the Pasuk. Tim Dibre Ayam in this Pasuk, we say it every day before Yashir in Vayvarach David. Lecho Hashem HaGidula, Shboku, the Gedula. Gedula is usually the mid of Chesed. The cross is Gvura. In between, like a Sego, it's the Tiferes, the Hanetzach, the Aoid, and the two more spheres. So, so, basically, if I would go here, So a lot of the time in the Psukim, the Chesed is called a Gdula because to be to do Chesed with someone is a greatness. Because a person by nature, since he is born, is used to receive. And now you're doing the opposite of the nature you were born with. So it's a greatness. So Chesed Gvura Tiferes Netzachoy. That's what David Hamelech says. The chesed is yours, the gevura is yours, the tiferes is yours, the netzach, which is also a chesed, is yours, and the ahoyd is a din, is also yours. Everything is in heaven, and identically, semidists sem are on earth. Lecha Hashem HaMamlacha, it talks about the Malchus, for the Shboku, the, the the royalty is yours. The hamisnase lechol leroish. I have no word to translate this. Hamisnase means the one who raised himself lechol to all. If he wanted, if David Hamelach meant to say he was above any head, he should have said hamisnase lechol roish. But what greatness that Kodesh Baruch is greater than every head, every every other creature, because everyone besides him is a creature from him. So obviously he's greater than that. But David Hamelech says lechol leroish. This is that. David Hamelech says something else. What he means by Misnaseh Lechol Yerosh. So this is the passage the Midrash brings, the Midrash Tanhuma, and says the same way that Kodesh Baruch Hu says Beha Misnaseh Zelosh and Se'es to raise he told Moshe Rabbeinu Se'u Esrosh. You have, he didn't tell him count, he told him raise the heads. To raise the heads, it's the same thing in Pasha's Kisisa. When you will raise the head of the Bnei Israel, meaning when you're going to count. So every time there is a count, the Bnei Israel get elevated. Counting, you elevate them. What kind of elevation can you have by counting people? There's no such a thing. You know, it doesn't seem logical that I'm going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They get any elevation from this. 
give them a bracha, maybe they're going to get done with the Bereshim. If you do, I don't know, you do a yichud on them, they're going to get an elevation. But just like this, so, and and the Midrash refers us, but the Tanfuma was a Tana. So he refers us to that Pasuk in Dibre Hayamim Behamisnase Bechorevash. But really, you can't compare them. When he says Se'u Etrosh, raise the heads, that's translatable. Maybe it doesn't mean counting, you know, it's not clear, but it's, you, you can understand the chart. But Vehamisnase Lechol Lerosh is not understandable. It's not translatable according to the Pshat. So how come the Midrash brings us from, from you know, a Pasuk in Bamidbar that we count in to a Pasuk in Gibre Hayamim that we praise Hashem? Yeah, we know all the Midas are, are His, but David Amelech is using a, a language that, that we don't understand. Every day in the Hallelujah, we see that we say by Yaron Kern Amoy in the one before last. Uh, sure, um, it says by Yaron Kern Amoy the Hilo Lechot Hasido Vivne Sir Am Keroivoi Hallelujah. No, it's in the third one. Uh, and then we finish we <clears throat> the last sentence is the Yorem Keren the Amoy. He will bring up the horn of, of his nation. So this language or again shows that raising the horn, raising the head. Okay, I can understand raising the head. The truth is someone has his head down, he's being beaten by an oilam haze, he has tsaris and everything. He gets broken. So you bring in bracha, you bring in light. <clears throat> Automatically, you know, he raises his head. All of a sudden, he's under the light. He doesn't see darkness anymore. Because when he, there's darkness, there's nothing to see forward. So, so you bend the head. But counting? How do I raise your head by counting you? But the whole Bamidbar is all about this. Rashi explains on the passage. So I mentioned before that because Akadosh Bohu's law, he says when they um, came out of Mitzrayim, he counted them. To see the to see the numbers, when they did the angel, he counted them. Uh, when they received the Torah, he counted them. When they finished the Mishkan, he counted them. And that shows, you know, like someone who has like the, the Gemara says, like someone who has money in his pocket, you know, always checking. Like we know, counting. The bracha can only lie upon something that's hidden from the eye. So something that you don't advertise. But here, Akadosh Baruch advertises the number of Rebbe And remember, we still don't know how the count was done here. The Zayar Akadosh Explain something very strange. Very, very strange. He says here the purpose of the count in Bamidbar is that the who wanted to know how many soldiers the Torah has. So how many are, they call them Mare de Torah. How many, how many masters, how many it's soldiers. He has in 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 the camp of Torah, and how many he has in the camp of the Mishkan of the 
שכינה. אמין. הקדוש ברוך הוא, a man can play and can pretend to be. אבר הקדוש ברוך הוא, sees the inside. אדם רואה לעיניים, הקדוש ברוך הוא sees the heart, the thoughts of a person. So, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't know. So if the counting, for such a counting that has to be in such a depth, that you had to know how to divide the Bnei Yisrael between the, those who, who belong in the army of the Torah versus the, those who belong in the army of the Mishkan, then it's not something for Moshe Rabbeinu, it's something for HaKadosh Baruch. And the Zohar explains that this is what the Pasuk meant at the beginning, stating by Daber Hashem al Moshe Galao Meimoyer, be Midbar Sinai, sorry, Daber Hashem al Moshe be Midbar Sinai, be Oihel Moyer. Why does he say be Midbar Sinai? So it's in the Midbar, be Oihel Moyer. In the Oihel Moyer. Is the, was the Mishkan in Eretz Yisrael? I mean, uh, the, at that time, they were in Eretz Yisrael, they were in the Midbar. So the Zoya says there's no need of repetition, the be Midbar Sinai. If you had said the Midbar Sinai, we knew that after already, when the Mishkan was, was built, that only Akadosh Bokh was addressing Moshe Rabbeinu only in the Oihel Moyer. So there was no need to mention the so he says Midbar Sinai is the Torah and Oihel Moyed is the Mishkan and Bnei Israel were divided into groups. Those who elevated themselves to the higher level, which is the Torah, which is Kuchabarif, which is the Tiferes, the Eitzachayim, and those who were on the lower level, which were right under in the Malchus, and they make one. So Bnei Israel, you had two groups, the group of the Torah, the group of the Mishkan, which was where the Malchus, where the Shechina was, was residing there. And together they were one. Now, <clears throat> usually in Shemayim, we're trying to put the Shechina and the Tiferes together, which is the big Yichud. Now here, the Shabbat says, you know what? We need to know how many in each group, like you want to divide them, but the purpose, we say, Amen, it's 91. Yud Kevav Kei Alev Dalet Nuyu. It's to put them together. Everything we do, the mitzvah of Sukkah, Sukkah 91. Exactly like Amen. Malach 91. Yud Kevav Kei Alev Dalet Nuyu. And we try to make one. The name of Hashem is written Yud Ke Bav Ke, but we don't read it that way. We say Aleph Dalet Nun Yud. But we, even though the, the 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 writing and the reading is different, the Machshava put them together. So you say something with your mouth, you see something with your eyes, but your thoughts are putting them together. And now, apparently, according to the Zohar. The purpose of the counting was basically because once you know you know a number of these and a number of this, this created by itself a separation. So how do you want to separate them? And here at Khazvishalam, everything that happens down below happens up there. And the purpose of all our Vida, all our everything we do is to, to unify Akadash Boku and the Shina. The Midrash says in Shmois that when Moshe went up in Parshas um, Yisro, oh, yeah, it's it's very uh, very late or very early for whoever wants to take it. 
So um, when Moshe Rabbeinu went up to Shemaim to get, we all know the story for the Gemara Shabbos also, that, uh, but here, the, the different aspect I want to bring. It says that the, the first Luchas, so Moshe was writing, a Kodesh Baruch who says, hey Moshe, get up, go away from here because your people have seen. Go away. Moshe Rabbeinu thinks in an instant, he says, okay, I'm leaving, and he he holds the luchas and he and Akadosh Baruch Hu, um, I'll call you back. I'm giving share. Yeah. Um, and Akadosh Baruch Hu was right away caught two tfachim of the luchas. Moshe Rabbeinu had two tfachim, and there were two tfachim left. And Moshe Rabbeinu grabbed them out of the hands of Hashem. That's what the Midrash says. Had the strength, he didn't have the strength, he had the will. And he grabbed the Luchas and he ran down. And, uh, and that's why I said the Pasuk, Ali Salam Moran, you went up to Shomayim, Shavisa Shevi, you, you took a hostage. I wanted to take it back from you. I didn't want you to take the Luchas we showing us the first luchas down here, the luchas that we're gonna hear of the Kabbalah Satira of Shavuos. These are the luchas we showing us that we heard, but they never came down physically on earth here. And and the first one to bring them here to bring to uh, uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, who didn't want them to go down, they didn't deserve to be in this world. The world where the eagle was down, they could not come down. However, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Moshe Rabbeinu, he did well. Shabbi Shabi, we'll see in the Yerushalmi later. So Moshe Rabbeinu, by holding two tfachim, exactly like the two tfachim were HaKadosh Baruch Hu holding, boom. He pulled them out and he took Okay. What was the cheshbon of Moshe Rabbeinu to bring the, the, the luchas down? Okay, Kodesh Baruch Hu said, no, you listen to everything Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Moshe Rabbeinu. Why don't you listen? Why all of a sudden you try to, to force almost Kodesh Baruch Hu and and still, because Shavi Shavi, you took her hostage. In other words, a good language you say you stole them. Let's, let, let's explain this a little bit deeper. If you take here, Vishavisa. Shevi. So that's what the passage says. And we focus, it, it, it's almost repeated. You hostage, you hostage. But here we have a word. So I'm going to put that. We have a word. That's interesting how we call the luchas. You took the luchas, it says the shavisa luchas, but don't call it shevi. You took a hostage, someone you imprisoned someone. Shevi equals three twelve. Equals twelve times yud kevavke. We're not talking about the luchas that he took down. We took Hakadosh Baruch Hu down. Shevi, Shiv. It, 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 it doesn't say the luchas is feminine. It says in masculine. He took. So we have twelve months of the year, and these twelve months, each one has a different way to write. The the youth cave off cave. I have it uh, not exactly this one here, but you would understand. 
Nissan, you'd give up the written um, straight. Iyar, Bisma, Yud, Hey, Hey, Vav. Sivan, and that's the, the Kavana. I gave this in the Shir already for a few weeks ago. Uh, and this is the Kavana we have during um, when we say the bracha of Musaf uh, of Rosh Chodesh, Mechadesh Chodashim. And the K follows the same thing. So this is in the Chachma, this is in the Bina. So Yud K, Hey Vav. So the Hey, he is Aleph, Hey, Hey Yud. But let's focus on the Yud K Vav. Yud K Vav, K Sivan, Shavuos, Yud Vav, Hey, Hey. Tammuz, Hey Vav, Hey Yud. So there's 12 different way of writing the Yud K Vav. And this is what Moshe Rabbeinu apparently took down. Now, we start, it starts becoming interesting here. Because we have 12, uh, 12 Shabbatim, we have um, the Degalim, it's four times three, which is 12. What is Moshe Rabbeinu had in mind when he brought down the The luchas by force. Look, I'm going to bring this back up. If you take a cube, how many sides has a cube? If you started counting them, it has 12. What does it tell me? What is this magical number 12 is that Moshe Rabbeinu intentionally tried to bring me down here. In other words, we can even suspect here that the Chesh, because the the Luchas Rishonis, it was a it was a Torah that a person could see from one side of the world to the other. We spoke about it last week. The 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 Luchas Rishonis, the person could revive the dead. The Luchas Rishonis. With the Torah inside, but just learning it, a person could create a world. But we didn't receive it because of the ego. However, it came down to earth. Had Moshe listened to Akadosh Baruch Hu, these Lucas Rishonis would have never come down. Remember last week the Shemitah it's part of the mitzvahs of the Lotus Rishonis. So we see the fact that Moshe brought down the first Lotus. It had an impact in our lives. It had an impact in the world. Did do the Degali depend on the Lotus Rishonis? That is something we have to see. But the fact that the Lotus Rishonis touched ground on earth despite the fact that we have not received them, they have brought down to here something that can never go back, that's going to remain with us. And now the Shira starts. Now we arrive to the core of there was an occurrence, something had happened, and this is what's going to change forever the course of life on this world and the course of life of the Nezra. The Yerushalmi says in Tainis, that Kodesh Baruch Hu, when Moshe came back, he told him, that I will write on the second Luchas, sorry, I will write on the second Luchas what was written on the first Luchas. I gave a share on this already, and it's not for now, because the second Luchas are totally different than the first Luchas. Even if you just want to say the the, the there was a Seres Adibris on it, the Aceres, the language between the Aceres Adibris in Pasha's Yisrael and in Pasha's Vaishchanan are different, even especially on Shabbos. 
So, but I give a show and, 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 I, and I show the differences and analyze and explain them. But here it's not for this. But the Yerushalmi says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem admits to Moshe, you know what? You did well that you took them. And you did well. I agree with you that you broke them. This could have said, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, the whole Feshben, spoken to Ashes Kisisa, we know that Moshe Rabbeinu said to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Be'im a'im mechenina misitrecha asher pasafta, erase me from the book that you wrote. Why? Because I'm like them. I, I took the luchas, and with anger, I broke them. And anyone who gets angry, it's like he served David Azara. And Mesh Rabbi Tarakadosh Baruch Hu now, you can't say anymore, you're going to take me and from me create a nation. It's impossible. Because now I'm Oyved David Azara like them. So either you forgive them and you forgive me, or if you don't forgive them, please don't forgive me and Mechani now. So that was, that was the process. So, but in essence, HaKadosh Baruch Hu tells Moshe Rabbeinu, whatever you have done with the luchas and with everything, it was meant to happen and you did right. Only luchas shnis could, could come, it's the Torah from Oilam Aberia, the, the luchas Rishonis is from Oilam Atzilus, you know, you can't. A person now, the, 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 the job of a person, the tachlis of a person, it's to go use what you have. So now we have Asiya, Yetzira, Beria. So we had the Torah to go to Beria. But Beria to Atsilus, that's a gap. That's what you, you have to do it. How you have to do it, we'll see. But this is the part, the blank that remains. And this is the avoida that a person has to accomplish during his lifetime. There's a marvelous, marvelous Fasemes here. You know, I don't like to go in too many Pirushim in a shir, but um, but re re really so fundamental that I feel like uh, like I brought the Pasuk Oh, yeah. So I can say it over on the passage itself. I'm going to put a comment here. Moshe went up to Eloikim. Eloikim is the Midas Hadim, it's the Machus. Right? So just for us to remember, I should put it a bit closer because we use it quite more often. So we have all the Midas here. The Machus is here. Here we have two names. Which is Aleph Dalet Yud. Every Mida, there's a name inside. Yud. And we have also, it is a pure. Okay, and Eloikim. So Moshe Rabbeinu came through here because they are Shal Hashem. Anyone who wants to go up has to come through the Malchus, through the Shechina, and go up. From there. So Moshe Rabbeinu comes here, and then the Paso starts changing the language. And it says, Vayikra Ela Hashem. Shem Hashem from Rachmin. Morin Shabbos says that it was Medina we were supposed to receive the Torah. It was not just. Uh, a wheel, or it was Medina we had to receive it. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give it the Matana. Because nobody could, could raise themselves to the level of deserving the Torah. So, Moshe Rabbeinu, by Yikra Hashem, took him up and brought him above the worlds of the Malachim. Right into Atsilos. 
Malachim are in three worlds. I'm not going to go into the describe them, but Bia, Beria, Yetzira, Asiya. These are the world of the Malachim. This is these are the world where you find Malachim. Patinat Silos, Sakodesh Bok. And Akodesh Bok took Moshe Rabbeinu, so he could only raise himself to the Malachus, and Akodesh Bok brought him up all the way to Hashem to meet this Amarachim. Minhaha from Akadosh Bohu did not like the high mountains. He brought him from a low mountain, says this Hasemis. Why? Because a person who wants to get the Torah has to feel. I'm mixing up a little bit with the Noyam Elimelech here, making a vote because they're very, their vote is very, very much alike. Laymore, why did he want to give it? Because he wanted to give it for him, Laymore, to say to the Bnei Israel, because the world cannot be without Pharaoh. Because Chukka Shemaim Baaretz stand on Pharaoh. And if we don't have the Torah, the world cannot keep on going. So, either way, one of them has to leave its. If there's no terror in this world, well, then we're all going to go up. If Akadosh Bochu wants terror, then the terror cannot remain in, in the world of the Malachim. It has to go down. This is what you're going to say, even though Besiakov is the woman, but here the Svasemis goes in the two meters. He says there are people that don't deserve the Torah on their own. Exactly like the Midrash, we had the two categories where we asked before. Those who are in the army of Torah, the soldiers of Torah, the Nisra, and Bes Yaakov, it's a lower, so they deserve the Torah. They deserve to receive the Matana, the, the, the present from Hashem. These do not receive. And they needed Moshe Rabbeinu to raise them to the level that they, that, that they can receive the matah. That's how he explains um, the pasuk here. And, um, and we see from his words that we, we're going back to the same two categories of... Um, of Bnei Israel that we have to understand. So let's take it back because there are more than two categories in Bnei Israel, number one. And number two, why do you want to split them? Even if in Bnei Israel, the same way that we have here, even if in Bnei Israel, there are different categories of, uh, of people. But in Shamayim, we keep those aligned, all the spheres attached. We don't want to detach them. So don't tell put this guy, oh, to the right, you to the left, you to the right, you to the left. It doesn't work that way. That's not creating achdus. This is Chaz Vesham creating period between him. Oh, I'm not the same as him. Oh, I'm better than him. No. We can't come to this. Moshe Rabbeinu says the Zoya that when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him to do the Degalim, he was very scared. He became white. Why? Because he says, now nah, I'm going to have a Machloikes on my hands. Which Machloikes? Because now nah, I'm going to tell this Shevet to be in the front. I'm going to take this Shevet to be the head of a digger, of a of a formation. The one, the second one. So the third one is going to say, "Well, I'm not second. I'll show you where. The second one is going to say, "Well, I'm not first. The first one is going to say, "Well, I'm not in the east. When you put me in the south, when you put me in the north, when you put me in, in the thing, he says that's going to turn me to me. But the Shabbat who said, "You have nothing to worry. Once you're going to put them in formation, there's going to be a tremendous activist and tremendous shock." All right, great. I love this. So the Degalim are great. In that case, 
by dividing them into groups, the group of Torah and the group of, of, of the mission. Let's go here. Second, we dwell in the puzzle and we're going to see a lot of answers coming back. So we, we were in the, this pasuk at the beginning because everything starts with the counting. Because the counting for a purpose of putting them in formation. So, and the Midrash had brought down, the first Midrash we brought that Se'u es Rosh because the Amisnase Lechal Erosh. So that's what we're going to take here and we're going to dwell and is being raised. The Cholerosh, we say we cannot translate. This equals to 611. This equals to Torah. When Bnei Israel down there, learn Torah, the Biyachal is being raised. So, now, Seu es Rosh, since you wanted to compare me in the Midrash, I'm going back to the source. I'm going to try to stay very close to the words and not try to lose you again. So when you say Seu es Rosh, are we talking about Torah? Are we talking about the Rosh? You know, what are we calling about? Remember that year. Just going to, I told you, Yisrael. Israel is, com is composed by two words. Ni, Ni, and Roish. The word Roish is here. The inner letters. The word Li, which is the Bina, you know, is Mekif. So there's a whole Indian here with the garland that I'm not going to be able to touch. What are the Oiris? What are the lights? that was surrounding the Bnei Yisrael to the point that the Goim saw and told the Bnei Yisrael, can you form us the same way? Look at, look at, look at, look at the, look at the, the Azos they have. The, the, the reason like, no tomorrow. They would, they, they would love to harm us, but they can't, now they're scared. Oh no, they do well, do us the same thing. And then they told the Bnei Yisrael, come to us and we'll make you be kings in our nations. Israel said, no, we stay in formation. What did they see that the whole world saw? I mean, because they were three Shabbatim and working like the legionary, you know, the, the, the Roman Chazvesham, you know, the, the Roman legions, this creates a fear, this creates things. No, Roman legions were decimated at the end. So, so what is the fear yeah. They are suli mikdash the shachanti They will do me a mikdash, and I will reside among them. Where them here? Where is the shechina in the word Israel? I remember I said Israel is not a noun; it's an adjective. Because Rosh equals five hundred and one. Like how much was the shechina is there? Now we're starting understanding that you have a rush, <laughs> le, le rush, not to simply rush, because the rush only brings you to the level of what? Let me write it down. 501 equal Hamalchus. To the Shechina. Where was the Shechina? In the Mishkan. And where is your Mishkan? Inside my word, Israel. So, Seul Esrash, but you have the others that they, they raise themselves above that. And this is the, um, the married Torah, the soldiers of the Torah. And these, what do they do? They raise Hakodesh Bog. These raise the Shekhinah. These raise Hakadosh Baruch 
Ok. Now, if I take the whole sentence together like this, and I say what is equal to, see what's behind the Ramisnase the Cholerosh. So we explained the Cholerosh already, but now we want to explain it all together. Equals 1430, 1430. The easy way out is Eloiki. So we have, so even the name Eloikim, so when we raise Akadosh Baruch Hu, we see here that even the name Eloikim, which is Midas Adin, Yechoneinu gives us Chen, Yivarcheinu. And, and bring down bracha, your pana bitanu and and will shine. Its face will shine to us exactly like the name of Hashem. So even midas adin agrees to bless us when we raise Hashem. But you know what? For us, we need a little bit more of this to understand what's going on. Uh, So 1413 equals nine times. You'd uh, care about K. K. Aleph, Aleph, Yud. Adam. That is my head. Nine. A person elevates himself to the level of Chachma. So he is way above. He entered at Sirius already. He is in the Oilam at Sirius. Here, Chachma, Bina, Malchus, and him. The quadruple thing. Everything works with four, four feet up there and everything. He took the youth cave of K and the Hoffman, the Vina, put them together. They're the father and the mother. The Machus is here. This is the door, door the up. And together, because he brings it up, exactly what it says on Shabuos, whoever raised the Machus, the Machus always rewards him by bringing him, him up with her. She never will go up with that. The Zayar Kodesh says, on Shavuos night, when the Malchus comes after we say the 24th Sfarim, he comes and it's, Hashem says, who embellished, embellished you? He says, so and so and so and so. He says, invite them to the chuppah. And they come and, 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 and they rejoice HaKadosh Baruch Hu on Shavuos, HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the Shechina. And it equals nine times. You know, just interesting to know that uh, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if I wanted to know ten times what it is, so ten times this equals 1,570. Exactly what the passage says, like the book will give us Eretz Israel, it says, Nachale um, Maim, Ayonois, Ayonois, is calling us. There's no problem again. Ayanis is famous. I'm just going to put the, the royals. Yeah. Um, 
Yes. Okay, here we are. So now, Rav Hashanah who ordering the midbar for forty years, he tells us about being spiritual. But when every time he's going to describe Eretz Yisrael, he's going to tell us, "Oh, look how great Eretz Yisrael! It has water and everything." And, uh, I understand we cannot live without water, but why do you describe Eretz Yisrael? You know, by just this terminology, you know, it has water. We know mine is Torah. And and Akadosh Baruch Hu wants spiritual versus uh, physical. So describing Eretz Yisrael as Chito Soira, everything is phys is physical about Eretz Yisrael. It doesn't seem that he has any spirituality in it or helping the spirituality. But this is wrong, because if you take the word Torah and Mitzvahs, and we're going to open them up. Like this. Tav. Vav. It's not it's this way. Vav. Reish. Hey. So, Tera. Uh, Mem. Sadiq. Vav. equals 1,570. This is Hadig. Hey, that yes, HaKadosh Baruch Hu uses sometimes sentences to give us a deeper meaning. And this Nach Lemay Mayanos is famous is exactly if, if I take this Ten times by being Mikhaim, the Torah and Mitzvah, a person elevates himself to which level? To the Kesa, to the ten. So we, we see that by learning Torah only, a person can elevate himself to the Chokma because Torah Chokma, okay. But if you do Torah and mitzvahs together, then it's 10 times. You, you go up to the Keser. This is the Tachlis of a person. The... Shulchan Aruch says, when a person brings Truma, he has to say, I'm the Mishnah, you know, it's the Mishnah first and I go, this is true. I got to say it with my mouth. Did I do something? No. But as soon as I've said it, somehow, something is being accomplished right away. It becomes college. When I want to to um, to do the Meiser Behema, so they had babies, the animals had babies. So every ten is Kailash. You have to bring it to the to, to the, the base of So you, you they were doing a small opening and making them go through every ten, say this is Kailash. And you have to count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, count them with my mouth. What did I do? I brought on Kedusha on the tenth, which is the Kaddish. If he didn't count them. Nothing happens. What do, what do I accomplish what, what, when I say with my mouth, you know, um, it's Kaddish? What, what kind of accomplishment is that? What kind of accomplishment is saying words? We don't realize that the whole entire, this world, you remember I showed you the cube and the cube had 12 uh, 12 lines sorry 12 lines the person in this world no one is free 
you are in a cube. But you, you have the choice to decide which cube you can be. In the Sefer Hayetzira, Sefer that uh, of Abraham Avinu, I have to take the Mishnah because I don't want to say Sefer Hayetzira wrong, that there are 12 letters with which HaKadosh Baruch Hu has created the 12 Mazalis, so the 12 uh, Zodiac, and there are 12 months of the year, And in the body, there are 12 leaders, the two hands, the two feet, um, the kidneys, the, the liver, and, and so forth. So we have 12. So it, it's a game of 12. And so now we see that the month of the year, a 12 correspond because if you do um, a transitivity here between all the 12s, because if it tells you, I took 12 letters and I created, then I uh, created 12 months of the year and they are 12. And it's always the letters that start at the beginning and one comes from another. So you can see that the 12. Um, organs, important organs in the body, relate, correspond to the 12 month of the year. Now, again, 12 Shvatim correspond to the 12 month of the year, to the 12 forms of writing or, or ways of writing the Yud Kevav. The side is like this. And I would not say this, the, the Sefer Yetzira honestly was extremely, extremely important, extremely fundamental. Time. Time is all. We have seen that already when we spoke about Pesach. Zman equal 97, right? Equals U, A, uh, A, the one that's worth 52, like a behemoth, and U, A, uh, A, the one that's worth 45, like Adam, like a person. And the tachlis with time is to bring this you'd give off, okay, to this. We did it also on the short side. I think I have it here. The short side. We have the you'd give off, okay, here, bringing it up to the you'd give off, okay, there. Then your life is like a shulchan before Hashem. Shulchan. Anyway, that's not the... The purpose of a share so this man why do i say that because then time the year depends on time so you have shana which is a year which is equal 355 which is equal i don't know if i gave the share to your guys about this but i think he, uh, i did equals five times yoina Who's Yoyna? We saw from the Zoya, Yoyna is a Neshama. We explain what is Yoyna the Neshama because Yoyna equals 71. Equals 71. Equals Yudke Vavke Adam. It's the Yudke Vavke that's in the person. So now I have shown up five times. There are five levels of Nishama, Nefesh, Ruach, Nishama, Chaya, Yechim. And the task this is, 
to be able, because at the beginning we have the nefesh when when uh, when when the Bnei Israel only came out of Mitzrayim, they only had the nefesh tahor. When they prepared themselves to receive the Torah, you know they were giving truma or mishkan whatever. They had the ruach. When they received the Torah, they received the neshama. Then it's your work. Chaya yechida, you're only getting it with your work which is a neshama to the neshama, a neshama to the neshama of the neshama, which is yichida. very, very uh, seldom people can, can, can reach that level. And, and, and this is the tachlis of the whole world because it depends on time. The, the fabric of time here is in order to perfect ourselves. Now look at this. HaKadosh Baruch Hu told us here, Bemid Bar Sinai, I don't think I'm going to have time to go uh, on the too much on the garden. This equals 378. Hashmal. Hashmal is the line. When Adam Arishan was in, in Ganeiden, he had clothes of light of Hashmal. It's also the first letters of uh, Malachim, but anyway. Kashmal is life equals malbush, a cloth. When a person, so you have the shana in front of you. You have the challenge to raise yourself and get a neshama to the neshama. How do I do it? You have to have a cloth of light. With the cloth of flesh, which is made out of the nachash, of the serpent, and getting nowhere. First thing first, you have to get a cloth of light. How do you get a cloth of light? With your mouth. When we say your bracha, it has to be said properly because it creates light. If you think of a bracha, you know you eat it. So you can see that the formulation, the expression, the saying is the one that does it. So, and we're going to get to the point. Understanding what did Moshe Rabbeinu do when he counted and he said the numbers, automatically the Gdusha him started coming down of, on the Bene Israel. Which Kedusha will see? The I'm still going to say this. Yehuda was to the east. Mizra. Malachuria. Oyer. Because when the sun starts coming up, it starts coming up from the east. Usually I turn this into a question. What did we learn from the Degalim? Nothing. If you look at the Choshen that the, the, the Queen God had, it was set up in Degalim. Look at this. If you take the Pasuk dates, Oidem Pidda Ubarekes. The, the stone of Yehuda was Oidem. The stone of Yisachar was Pidda. It, it was in the first line. In the Vulun, right. And you follow the Pasuk. The second Pasuk, Noifech, is Ruben. Second line in the in the Khrishan. Sapir is Shimon. Yalom is God. And, and so forth. All the stone correspond to the, the God. Why? This is the secret. We said there's 12 months, 12 ways of writing Yud Kei Yud Kei. You realize that the first three camp all start with you. So now we have a general you here. The second group all start with he. So we have yud k. So we have one going lateral and one uh, horizontal and one going vertical. So now we're going to write the yud k above k vertically. You have a ladder. 
Sulam Yaakov. Sulam, 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 right? Let me see. Sinai equals 130. Equals Sulam. Here it tells us. The Midrash say there were four wrongs in the Sulam of Yaakov. What do we have here? These are the youth cave of Kelly. When someone has it horizontally and vertically, then, so you can't do the vertical ourselves, but we can do the horizontal ourselves. How? With your mouth. So every time you go that way, the, we, we two dimensional, we are not three dimensional. It looks like it, but we are not. We can only do things in a flat way. However, HaKadosh Baruch created that when we do something here, something is created up there. So you're affecting also HaKadosh Baruch Hu on this, and you're raising him. You're raising the Shekhinah with that. And the purpose is to make sure that when you do anything in Kodesh, it has to be said with the mouth. Because the mouth, so that's why here they didn't need protection, because we did not need to count them to know the count. HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows the count. We just counted them. He was accounting because in that case, when the, the, the person with his with his animals is counting them, he should have had the Ayin Hara. We should have, he should have counted his animals on the... No, when the, it's accounting for Kedusha, there's nothing. Amen.